up in the show. All the drama from across Europe as the World Cup qualifiers reach their climax. There's action from across the world as we relive the best of Africa, the Americas and Asia. And the most spectacular plays of the window. After five windows and hundreds of games around the globe, 14 spots for the 2019 World Cup were still up for grabs. This is the story of Window 6. There was still all to play for in Group J as two World Cup berths remained. Croatia's hopes of making it to China were hanging by a thread when they hosted Poland, who needed a victory to cement their spot at the World Cup. The home side got off to an ideal start, leading by four at half-time. How about that from the Croatian side? But Poland fought back in the second half. Mike Taylor's side eventually overtook Croatia and never looked back. Oh, how about that? This is my house, he says. The long wait was over as Poland had qualified for their first World Cup in 52 years. We're connected forever as, as accomplishing a, a really special thing for Polish basketball. We're extremely happy. You know, for us, it's a, it's a big deal. And, you know, just extremely proud of everybody, our team, our staff. So I'm very glad to be a part of it. You know, I just want all the Polish guys to be remembered as, as the ones who got it done. Italy also needed one win to confirm their place in China as they played host to Hungary. The Italians dominated throughout. La Liga! The two-handed jam. As they ran away, 75-41 winners, making it to their first World Cup since 2006. It's something really beautiful that we've achieved on the court. A year and a half ago, we said to ourselves that we can gain respect with our style of play. This is the result of all the years of hard work. I'm pretty sure it's important for every player who's played in these windows. I think it's also important for Italian basketball because we've reached our goal of getting to the World Cup. Meanwhile, group leaders Lithuania beat a gutsy Netherlands 78-69. Game day 12 saw the top two face off as Italy travelled to Lithuania. Mikali Vitali had a standout performance for the away side with 22 points. And now a chance for Italy going all the way through. Michel Vitali. But it was the Lithuanians that proved victorious. Securing the 86 73 win to the delight of the Klaipeda crowd. Elsewhere, Poland celebrated World Cup qualification with a fifth straight win when they got the better of the Netherlands. And Hungary finished their window on a high with an 84-65 win over Croatia. So Lithuania secured top spot in Group J, having only lost once. While at the opposite end, Croatia's dismal campaign ended with them finishing in fifth. It was still all to play for in the Asian qualifiers as several teams attempted to qualify for the World Cup in the final window. Game day 11 in Group F saw second and third lock horns as Iran went head to head with Japan. Despite 33 points from Mohamed Yamshidi, Japan picked up a crucial eight point win on the road. Elsewhere, the Philippines thrashed Qatar by 38 points to keep their World Cup dreams alive. Japan's 96-48 drubbing of Qatar meant that they had qualified for the World Cup in China. Iran needed a victory to ensure their place at the World Cup, but they had a stern test in front of them as they took on group leaders Australia. Mohamed Yamshidi once again dazzled for Iran. Charlie drives! Basket is good! His 25 points helped his side cause a big upset as they defeated the Boomers 85-74 and qualified for the World Cup. The 
Philippines went into their away tie with Kazakhstan, knowing that they had to win. And a staggering 41-point double-double for Andre Blatch. He's keeping the box score busy all on his own, Andre Blatch. Sealed an 18-point victory for the Philippines, who confirmed their place at the World Cup in September. We all came out. Well, one thing on our mind is, it was getting back to the World Cup, and um, I want to say, uh, you know, not only myself, but a lot of players play hard and make sure, we, you know, we got the win. Group F came to a close with Australia, Japan, Iran and the Philippines all punching their tickets to China. Meanwhile, in Group E, Lebanon hosted New Zealand in a pulsating matchup in front of a deafening crowd. The Cedars had the lead with 30 seconds to go, but then upset Tom Abercrombie. Abercrombie for three, doesn't mess around! The Tall Blacks taking a narrow two-point victory. With an outstanding 32-point performance, Jordan's Dar Tucker was by far and away their standout player against China. This time, it's Dar Tucker! helping his side to a comfortable 86-62 win. Jordan's World Cup hopes laid in the balance when they hosted group leaders New Zealand. A familiar face once again stepped up to the plate for the Jordanians. Talismanic Tucker does it again. They're dancing for joy in Jordan. His tally of 25 points, 14 rebounds and eight assists helped Jordan clinch qualification to the World Cup. So Jordan joined New Zealand, Korea and host China at the World Cup in September. We kick off proceedings in Group L with a dramatic game day 11 as basketball giant Serbia travel to Tallinn to take on Estonia. Serbia, who welcomed star player Milos Teodosic to their roster, needed a win to book their spot in China against an Estonian side who are no longer in the running for qualification. Teodosic, who ended the game with a double-double, impressed early. And now Serbia can push in transition with Teodosic. Pulls up for three, transition, and it's good. Well, possibly the greatest point guard in Europe. As Serbia held a narrow lead at half-time, the Serbs increased their advantage in the third, but Estonia rallied on both sides of the court to raise the deficit. With the scores level and just seconds remaining, Sandra Este stepped up when it mattered most. Kulabaya on the ball. Kicks out, corner, big three, six in, what a three-pointer! Estonia take a three-point lead. Nevertheless, Stefan Jelovac had the opportunity to equalise right at the death. Doesn't get it, misses! Serbia are not going to China yet. They win Estonia 71-70 against Serbia. Of course, it was a very important win for us. We have lost like 10 games in a row, but finally we got a very good win. It's great to win in front of such a great audience. And of course, to beat Serbia, it's a great team and I'm really happy. That defeat for Serbia meant that Israel's chances of qualifying for the World Cup had significantly improved. But the Israelis had a huge game themselves as they welcomed Germany to Tel Aviv. With the lead changing hands an incredible 21 times, it was a closely contested affair. But Israel managed to pull away in the final minutes. Guy Panini, he's clutch. He's so clutch, he knocks down the big three. Israel with a massive victory, 81 to 77. That four point victory set up a mouth watering winner takes all duel with Serbia on game day 12. Meanwhile, group leaders Greece picked up an 81 69 win over Georgia, ending the Georgians' dreams of making it to the World Cup. It was all or nothing as Serbia and Israel went head-to-head -head for a place in the 2019 World Cup. In front of their adoring home crowd, Serbia got off to a bright start. Teodosic with the pass! And Milosav Vjevic with the flush. As they led by 10 at half-time. Israel had no answer to Serbia's relentless pressure as the home side took the final World Cup spot in the group with a 97-76 win. It's a big win for us, and for sure we had a lot of pressure before this game. We, we know how hard was game and what does it mean, but we won. We did what we have to do. A little longer, but thanks to the fans, thanks to everybody who supported us, and thanks to these players. Estonia ended their campaign with a seven-point victory away to Georgia. While Greece cemented top spot as they defeated Germany 69-63 in Bamberg.
So Serbia take the third and final qualification spot in the group ahead of Israel. They'll be joined in China by Germany and Greece. Three places in the 2019 World Cup were up for grabs in the Americas. In Group E, a packed crowd at the Roberto Clemente Coliseum saw Puerto Rico face the mighty Argentina. It was a must-win game for the Buriquas if they had any hopes of joining Argentina in China. The home side had a 14-point lead in the third, only for Argentina to reduce that advantage in the fourth and force overtime. With seconds remaining in overtime, the Argentines had a chance to take the victory. Casino gets in the lane, hands it off to Delia. He's blocked. Puerto Rico have been declared the winners, 87 to 86. Elsewhere, Mexico severely impeded Uruguay's hopes of progressing to the World Cup. Long shot for Victor Alvarez is good. The bottom place side claimed a shock 11-point triumph that pushed Uruguay out of the automatic qualifying position. Meanwhile, the USA thumped Panama to pick up a 31-point win. It was win or be eliminated for the final World Cup qualification spot in the group as Puerto Rico played host to Uruguay. And the away side made a solid start. Zidato gives up the Peroni. Peroni for three. Tres puntos, por favor. Sinks a triple in transition. The Boricuas recovered, however, and led at half time. Puerto Rico managed to thwart the Uruguayan offensive. Well, Passos now catches the pass. Gets rejected. Well, as they recorded a five point win that sent them through to the 2019 World Cup. There was also late drama when the USA played Argentina. They put it up from deep. Oh, he hit that! Can you believe it? Reggie Hearn has struck with a dagger. Unbelievable! So after topping Group E, reigning champions USA will be aiming to defend their title in China, where they will be joined by Argentina and Puerto Rico. In Group F, Brazil knew they could punch their tickets to China with a victory against the Virgin Islands. And with five players reaching double digits, the Brazilians picked up a 24-point win, booking their place at the World Cup in the process. The Dominican Republic had to win against group leaders Venezuela to remain with a chance of making it to China. And again, Rigoberto Mendoza! And they did just that, picking up an impressive 72-67 victory. Currently the best fourth place team, the Caribbean nation knew that World Cup qualification was in their grasp when they took on Brazil. Despite suffering a 71-63 defeat, results elsewhere meant that the Dominicans had secured the final World Cup qualifying berth from the Americas. Wins in the final window over Chile and Venezuela saw Canada top group F. Venezuela, Brazil and the Dominican Republic also booked their places to the 2019 World Cup. Still to come in the show, we shine the spotlight on Group K to see who else advanced to China. There's all the action from a hectic Group I. And there's our best plays from the final window of the World Cup qualifiers. More dramatic action awaited as Group K got underway, with both Russia and Finland still in with a shot of booking a place in China. Russia travelled to Botograv to face Bulgaria, knowing that only a win will do to keep their World Cup dreams alive. And from the get-go, the away side were dominant. Kulagin goes in. No, he goes up for the two-handed jam! Goodness me! The Russians took a 22-point lead into the break and didn't stop there. Another quick pass down low. Oh, and the follow and the dunk from Zabelin. Russia scored 18 three-pointers on the night, a joint high in a single game among all European teams in these qualifiers, capping off an impressive 44-point victory over Bulgaria. This is incredible. Russia win this one 104 to 60. This put pressure on Finland when they played host to France in Espoo. The first half was a tight battle as France went into the break with a two-point lead. Come back away from the ball and it's a steal. Great defense and the dunk. 
Although Finland fought back. Here comes Wilson back out to half. He's good for three. And in the final quarter, up step Jamal Wilson. Wilson, Wilson left hand. He's, he's played that shot so perfectly. Scoring 29 points on the night, he helped Finland secure the vital win. A set up a winner takes all clash against Russia. Finland have done it here at the Espo Arena. Elsewhere, Czech Republic got a four-point win over Bosnia and Herzegovina in Pardubice to continue their hopes of finishing top of the group. So the stage was set in Perm as Finland travelled to Russia on game day 12. The away side knowing a three-point victory would see them book a place in the World Cup. And it was the Wolfpack that came out flying in the first quarter to rack up an 18-point lead. The Russians then went on an impressive run to cut the deficit to one by the half. Back come Russia, just what Finland didn't need. Antonov from the free throw line, no mistake. The Finns were not giving up on their World Cup dream, though, as it was tight going into the final quarter. Kerpenen inside, kick back out. And here's Koei Vesto for three. But Russia came up big in the fourth, knocking down seven of nine three-pointers. Kulagin, Zavorov Savic from the corner. He just can't miss right now. Sending the home crowd into raptures as they sealed their spot with the 91-76 win. They've done it. They're going to China and they're going to the FIBA Basketball World Cup. I'm so glad that we are back. It is vital for the Russian national team to be in the World Cup. Elsewhere, France secured their place at the top of Group K with an 82-66 win over the Czech Republic. While the last remaining tie saw Bosnia and Herzegovina seal an 87-67 victory over Bulgaria. That huge win for Russia saw them jump to second place behind France in Group K, with the Czech Republic finishing third. Nine games took place in Group F in Africa to determine who would take the final two remaining World Cup spots. Senegal went into their tie with Rwanda, knowing that a win would guarantee them a place in China. The Lions dominated throughout as they beat Rwanda 81-41, confirming their place at September's World Cup. Oh, Côte d'Ivoire were also in action as they were pitted against the undefeated Nigeria. The Nigerians, who had already booked their World Cup spot, had won nine games in a row. But Côte d'Ivoire remained undeterred. Sam dunk! Big time! They picked up one of the shots at the window, winning 72-46 as they boosted their prospects of World Cup qualification. Central African Republic took on Mali and needed to win if they had any hopes of ousting Cameroon as the best third-place team in the continent. And Ulrich Marida's side did exactly what was asked of them as they claimed a comfortable 75-57 win. Game day 11 saw Cote d'Ivoire continue their quest for a World Cup spot when they face Rwanda. Look pass. Oh, they love it, they love it. A little bit of showtime. Picking up a vital 87-60 victory. Nigeria returned to winning ways when they faced Central African Republic. Their 72-59 win ended their opponent's hopes of qualifying for China. While Senegal picked up a convincing 62-38 win over Mali. Against all the odds, Cote d'Ivoire were just one win away from qualifying when they faced Mali on game day 12. They needed a 13-point victory to ensure their place and dominated in the first half to secure an 80-point lead. This continued after the break with a standout performance from Suleiman Diabate, who racked up 16 points. Drives back outside. Diabate has been nailing these all day long. A 69-49 victory was enough for the home side as they ousted Cameroon to seal their spot in China. 
Nigeria's 84-63 loss to Senegal on the final day did not prevent them from capturing top spot. While Cote d'Ivoire dislodged Cameroon as the best third place team in the continent. Going into the final window, just one World Cup qualifying spot remained in Group I. Montenegro occupied third place in the group, but Latvia were right behind them. The Montenegrins had the tough task of trying to get a victory against Ukraine in Kiev. And it was made a lot tougher as the home side got off to a flying start. Another three-pointer for Ukraine. They are absolutely on fire in this first quarter. Nevertheless, Montenegro maintained their composure as Derek Needham helped reduce the deficit. Derek Needham is now playing like a superstar from Montenegro. His 26 points on the night contributed to a famous two-point victory for Svestan Mitrovic's side. Meanwhile, tabletop of Spain, who had already advanced to the World Cup, travelled to Riga to take on Latvia. The Latvians got off to a less than ideal start as they trailed Spain by 15 points at half-time. But they refused to be overawed as they fought back in the second half. Skeller steps back for the three and makes it. And now there's some belief inside the arena. Spain, however, proved why they are one of the best teams in the world as they kept Latvia at bay, picking up a five-point away win. Turkey, who had also already qualified, cruised to a 19-point victory in Ankara. The States could not have been any higher in this winner-takes-all duel between Montenegro and Latvia on game day 12. Going into the crunch tie, Latvia knew that they had to win by nine points to make it to China. And the Baltic nation got off to the perfect start. Timmer, oh, banks it for three. Latvia have come flying out of the blocks here in Podgorica. As they canceled out Montenegro's advantage at the end of the first quarter. But Montenegro fought back in the second. Passes it inside to Dublovic. Oh, and he can do that. Dublovic will get the lane at the end of the first half. The half time, Montenegro 31, Latvia 36. The sides were neck and neck in the third as the quarter ended 60 55. The game was still in the balance in the final quarter. Oh, wonderful quick ball movement from Latvia there. Their lead is up to eight. For the three! Oh, Popovic hits the clutch three! Only 30 seconds to go! Bertans, no time left. Gets the shot away. It's off target. It's time to get the party started here in Pogorica. Montenegro have beaten all the odds. They have made it through to the first ever World Cup finals in the country's history. We started a year or so ago with the most modest possibility, and we've achieved something that we really didn't even dream of. We deserve to go to the World Cup. Myself, the administration and the team would like to thank the people who cheered for us tonight. I really appreciate them and congratulate them from the bottom of my heart. Slovenia ended their campaign on a high against Ukraine. Can they get the ball to the right player? Dragic! Oh, my goodness! Zoran Dragic takes us into overtime. Taking a one-point win at home, while Spain defeated Turkey to cement their position as group leaders. So Montenegro were the final European nation to book their place at the World Cup in September. They will be joined in China by Spain and Turkey. There were some great plays from a dramatic final window, and here are our favourites. How about that from the Croatian side? Great team play from them. And now Ukraine can just extend that advantage. What a play. Bobrov throws it down. Down low. Marissa gets rejected. What a block. What a defensive play by Estonia. No, sir. Get out of here. This is my house. Can they get the ball to the right player? Dragic. Oh, my goodness. Unbelievable. Dragic ties the game. 
slices through, great pass. Oh, throw that one down on the end of the break. Oh, he just timed it perfectly, and Colum just gave it up. So the World Cup qualifiers are now officially over. 32 nations have qualified for the biggest sporting extravaganza of 2019. And it's set to be an unforgettable experience. Puerto Rico fans, you're going to the World Cup. Mission Impossible is completed. Montenegro have beaten all the odds.